So in the last video we was um, looking into HHO generators specifically for the purpose of generating oxygen. Um, but looking a little bit further into them, you know, I started to realise that the more professional um, versions of the HHO generators on YouTube were starting to, in my view, uh, look a lot like capacitors. In that what they was trying to do is cramming as much surface area uh, into the generator and then by putting um, electricity into their DC voltage it was generating larger quantities of um, HHO gas or Brown's gas. So you know with that you know uh, connecting the two together I thought well what would happen if we pulled apart a capacitor and as you can see you get these two different types of metals in capacitors um, sandwiched between the dielectric material. Uh, but the thing was, um, I, 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 I sort of like come to the idea that, okay, we know that capacitors are very tightly wound with two um, conductive materials and dielectrics in between. What would happen if we put one of those in the water and then just uh, hit it with some voltage? And in the video, which I'm about to show you, you'll see what happened. Um, I was very surprised at the rate of gas for the size of capacitor um, that was able to be generated. So I started experimenting then with different capacitors, uh, different voltage capacitors, different microferric capacitors. And I, I was starting to think that the bigger the capacitor, uh, the bigger the effect, and that wasn't the case. Um, I think I've got a 200 in this uh, beaker here, I've got a 200 volt uh, 100 microfarads capacitor, which is a very large one, um, but doesn't really yield massive amounts of, um, you know, HHO gas. The other thing is, these small ones didn't require any um, additional, um, uh, what's the word, light uh, or catalyst uh, to improve the yield of HHO gas. These capacitors on their own, uh, without no uh, electrolytes, seem to, you know, really pump out the HHO. But there is a problem. Uh, it's a bit of a payoff. Uh, they only withstand a certain amount of DC uh, power going through them, and they burn out very quickly. And what I found out is where there was burning out is where uh, the pin was on the capacitor. Uh, it was just. Uh, tearing at either side of those or in some cases it was just burning through the dielectric uh, material. Uh, so you know I started having a go at making some of these uh, myself and you know this is the sort of format that which I started making them. So I tried a few different ones I mean they're never, they're never going to be as good as what the um, you know professional manufactured capacitors are but I just wanted to see you know by using different sizes of um, material uh, different materials different lengths and uh, just to see whether I could improve the yield uh, or get it close to um, those ones that had been pre-made uh, so again this week we've drilled another hole in a piece of um, laboratory glassware seems to be a week for it uh, the other day it was on the um, uh, you know the uh, graduated test tube so that we could measure the quantity of oxygen in the atmosphere this today or you know over the last few days it's been for the purpose of uh, hydrolysis so you're going to see in the video which I'm going to run in a bit how much oxygen and hydrogen was produced just by a standard um, capacitor and I don't know whether I recorded uh, any of the ones that I'd made that's one of the ones that I made in there and um, you know, I was when I when I first came up with the idea, I thought this is something. No, I you know, I was um, thinking that perhaps it was me, uh, the only one that had uh, thought of the idea of using capacitors for HHO generators. The, the nice simple thing about these is anyone can get hold of a capacitor, pull the tin covering off them, uh, connect a DC battery to them, and produce electrolysis. That that is, I suppose, the beauty of it. But I thought I was the only one that had uh, come to the idea of, you know, using capacitors because of the uh, coiled surface area that had been rolled up in them, and I wasn't. Um, 
the only other guy that I'd seen do it was on YouTube. It was the only video that I'd found uh, where someone had used a capacitor for a HHO generator, and it was not nothing as elaborate as this or in the video that you're about to see. Uh, and he certainly, in the video, didn't take it any further than that by attempting to make his own capacitors. But you know, um, I, I just think that we're going to find. Um, a lot more about these capacitors in the future and I think there's a lot of technology that's going to come from um, the idea of uh, you know shrinking surface area of these plates um, and utilizing uh, the um, the whole idea of how capacitors work and you know if you've watched some of my other videos you know where I uh, talk about gravity um, and suggest that you know gravity is static charge, you know that sort of thing. That if you rub a balloon on your jumper and hold it to even paper or even tin or a little bit of foil or you know uh, dielectric materials, uh, there's nothing that it doesn't attract. And that, in my view, is exactly how gravity works. You know, gravity holds on to everything, be it dielectric or conductive. And um, I come up with the idea of using some form of um, you know, wrapped surface area like a capacitor um, to overcome the effects of gravity uh, by charging it with an you know a light charge. Uh, again, in the electric world, um, light charges repel each other and opposites attract each other. And um, you know, some of you people are going to say, well, you know, this is starting to fit the electric universe theory. Well, yes, it it, it will. Um, uh, you know, I think, like I say, there's a lot more to come out of this. So I'm going to run the video anyhow so that you can see, but that's basically what I've been up to this week. Um, you know, just looking into these.
So th despite these capacitors being relatively small, they do thump out quite a bit of HHO gas. Now, although they burn out uh, when they, you know, are subjected to, you know, around about half of amp at 30 volts, you can see the quantity of gas just before they do burn out that's being produced is relatively massive uh, when you s consider the scale of the um, you know the generator that that capacitor that's pumping out the gas and you might ask yourself well what could be the practical application then for capacitor HHO generators at the moment well there isn't one uh, if they keep burning out but if we can find a way to stop them burning out and find out why the smaller ones um, do better than the larger ones because in the second experiment that you've seen there was a 200 volts uh, 100 uh, microfarads capacitor that wasn't pumping out anywhere near the quantity of the smaller ones but if we could find out a way of stopping them burning out a way that they could handle you know the uh, amp, larger ampage I mean for a device that's small that pumps out that much gas uh, I'm pretty sure that there could be a practical application that in there somewhere and um, you know I've talked about it in other videos where I've got a couple of three and a half horsepower engines uh, that were on lawnmowers and I was going to try and get one of those engines perhaps in the summertime uh, to run on HHO gas um, I was going to use the power of the engine to turn either an alternator or a you know, DC generator or DC motor which will produce um, DC current which we can put back into the HHO generator but not only that exploit the wasted um, heat off the outlet manifold um, with the use of Paltier elements you never know. Uh, it could lead to, you know, at the worst case scenario, a high efficient engine that is combined using a combination of um, fuel, 50%, and HHO gas. Uh, or it could even lead to something greater than that, an engine that just runs solely on HHO gas and has the capacity to also supply a small amount of external electricity that can be used for other things. That that really is the aim. Um, there's two good reasons why we went down the road of looking into HHO generators. One was because part of the process of producing uh, this gas, uh, oxygen, can be obtained from it. And as a species, we need oxygen uh, should ever the atmosphere um, weaken any more and through the process of sputtering we lose the oxygen content from the atmosphere or some of that we can replenish uh, our needs in this method and the second one was the production of energy uh, if we can find alternative ways of producing HHO gas uh, cheaply more efficiently then it becomes more appealing and you know we get that bit closer to severing those shackles um, of the dependency of governments that supply uh, the demand for, you know, electricity. Um, you know, that's why we went down this road. Just before we end the video, um, I just give it a quick mention: the website Pole Shift News. Um, it's all uh, magnetic pole migration related. Um, there's a help fund us button there uh, if you want to uh, support what we do on this website and on YouTube uh, we don't advertise um, on either of the websites although I am looking into trying to obtain a bit of uh, sponsorship from a few companies uh, which I'm waiting to hear from it's not in place at the moment so you know your uh, contributions are very much welcomed um, you know, um, pop over there. It's uh, always been updated, and if anything um, new uh, comes about, then it gets put up on the website with regards to you know the migration of the magnetic poles. 
right now. Um, I think we'll leave it here, guys. Um, you know, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Big thanks to those people that do support the channel, and uh, you know, please continue doing that. You know, it's the only way we're able to afford ourselves the time to put into this, and um, you know, do the experiments and some of the practical, uh, you know, applications that we put on the website and on the um, YouTube channel. So enjoy the rest of the weekend, guys. Link down below if you want to help support the channel. And as always, bye for now.